This is a sponsored video that contains products provided without charge by the manufacturer for demonstration purposes. All opinions are my own. Today on Handy Dad TV, the cherry on top of the sundae. That is the stone veneer on the front of my fireplace. I'm going to talk about all the options that we went through and what we ultimately decided upon. I'm going to introduce you to my partner, Norstone, who provided the product for this project and I'm going to show you how to install it. And that's coming up. Welcome to Handy Dad TV. I'm Chris Heider, your virtual dad in the cloud. Today we're talking about stone. The stone veneer covering a fireplace. You don't have to make it out of brick anymore. Sometimes you can if you really want to hire a mason and they build a real masonry chimney. But there are so many advantages to a stone veneer because there's so many products to choose from. Well, I partnered with a company called Norstone to provide the product for my fireplace. And uh, these are samples that they sent me. When we originally started this process, we were looking for a stacked stone product like this. And this one's gray, and we liked a gray because it was gonna go with our furniture and the, the color choices in the room but I was also partial to something more earthy like this. And you can see it just provides such, such character. I mean, everywhere you look, you see stack stone. Restaurants, banks, other establishments, car dealerships, you name it, and a lot of homes too. Just look around on Pinterest for stone veneer. You're gonna find a lot of stack stone like this. Norstone has a couple of other products that are really different. Now, one of the products they offer is this three-dimensional stone, they call it. It's a 3D basalt, and it's a cut and polished stone that looks really contemporary, very modern, very sleek looking. And you can see I've got samples here in the ebony. This one is the gray, and this one is white. But you can see that it's very polished. So another product that they have that's relatively new is called planks. And planks, the reason why they're called planks is because they are stone, but they're wide format and they're long actually. So they kind of look like flooring planks if you want to compare it to flooring. So there are, again, a number of products that they have in that one, um, different grays and even this black ebony. I, I just tell you, they're so contemporary. Even though they're not as polished, they are smooth, they're not polished like the other ones, but uh, they weren't the right look for us. We weren't going for anything that contemporary. What we liked were this type of plank. Now, this one here is a darker gray. This one is considered graphite, and this is their, their plank product, P-L-A-N-C. So you can see the difference. This one is a darker gray, and it's a little bit shinier, but this one is rough, rustic. This was more of the look we were going for, and that's actually what we chose. That is Norstone Plank Platinum. Now, what we liked about it was it has character. It is lava rock, and so there are bubbles in it from millions of years ago when the lava spewed out of the ground and, uh, and was boiling, so these bubbles were created. And uh, some of those bubbles actually have bits of iron in it, so they have orange and red colors and browns and they really look interesting and I'll show you some of that later. So this is the way the plank product is packaged. There are actually three stones in every package. Let me uh, cut it open. This is the medium one. This one is the small. And this is the large. The interesting thing is that the the medium and the small add up to the large. So depending upon the look you're going for, you could put them next to each other. If you know what I mean. I didn't do it that way. I did it with a large and a medium and a small, one row at a time. Staggering the joints looks really good. But when I was talking about before about this being lava rock and, and the character, you could just take a look at this piece. Now, I didn't pick this ahead of time. This was just the random package that I opened. Look at the character in this piece. It's like, it's like multiple eruptions wound up in the same stone. 
and that's why some of it is smooth and small bubbles and the other one is big bubbles depending upon the temperature and the composition of whatever was in the lava it's just i don't know how can i get so excited about stone but it really is cool the other thing is you can see hopefully here you can see that there's some browns in it we really like the browns because it it even though it's a gray it warmed the room and it would go really well with the brown floor that we were planning so anyway this is really easy to install and i've got a lot of footage from the installation process so let's get to it and i'll talk through it as we go now this stone originates in vietnam but it was shipped to me in new jersey from florida now you can imagine that truck and a pallet of stone bouncing around for a thousand mile journey i wasn't surprised to see some breakage but that was completely fine with me because I would need a lot of random sized pieces anyway. Norstone needs to be installed on a hard, well-attached substrate, not directly on drywall. I used half-inch cement board, both Duroc and Wonderboard. I had some Wonderboard on hand, but I preferred Duroc because I find it easier to cut. It really doesn't matter. Just make sure it's strong and secure. You also need a good wet saw preferably one with a sliding table. And I got this one on sale for about $200 at Harbor Freight last year for my master bath remodel. It worked great on the Norstone. In fact, this stone was much easier to cut than the Carrera marble that I installed in the bathroom. I used a carpenter's pencil to mark the cuts. The marks were easy to see until the saw was turned on and the stone got wet. That's why I recommend a tile saw with a sliding table, because I could position the piece exactly where I wanted it before I turned the saw on. When you're trying to tell which side is the finished side, when it's wet, it tends to be easier to see. But you can see when it's held high to the light, I don't know if it's going to show up on camera, but you can see saw marks on it. And that's the one you would use as the back. You'd back butter that, put it against the wall. The other side tends to be smoother. And they're packaged so that they're, they're all facing each other. So if you remember that orientation when you open it up, this is always the side you're going to get. I pre-cut the first six rows of stone for above the mantle and laid them out face down in the order they'd be installed. I wanted to work as quickly as possible after mixing a batch of thinset. Speaking of thinset, I was using Versabond LFT, which stands for Large Format Tile, because it's a polymer modified thinset suitable for natural stone. I bought it at my local Home Depot and used about a bag and a half for this project. I mixed batches using about half the bucket and just added a little water at a time until it was the consistency of peanut butter. The mortar gets applied with a half inch by half inch square notch trowel. Notice how I overlap the corners in this installation. There are other ways to handle corners, but this method is the strongest and the easiest in my opinion. And I didn't need any special corner pieces like other stacked stone products. The flat side of the trowel should be used to put a thin layer of mortar on the back of each stone. This is called back buttering and it's needed to provide maximum adhesion. You can see how hard it is for me to pull off that front piece a little bit so I can fit the side piece in. Lava stone is very porous, so take great care to keep thin set off the face of the planks. 
Wiping with a rag may press the thin set deeper into the stone, so have a toothbrush and water handy to scrub it off as much as possible. I used 16th inch tile spacers to keep the first row of tiles off the mantle. This would make it a little easier to paint the mantle without getting it on the stone. Since I needed random joints anyway, I would just take a broken tile and cut the end off square, and then it was perfectly usable. I was fortunate to have a folding ladder that could be configured as a scaffold, and it let me comfortably work from the top of the TV mount to the ceiling. Now I installed my TV mount and outlets ahead of time so that I could install stone around them. It would be difficult to find studs through the stone, and I'd risk cracking the stone if I mount the TV on top of it. So it's best to pre-install if possible. When I got to the ceiling, I used a scrap 1x4 to mark the angle of the ceiling on a piece of stone. Then I used that to set the angle on the tile saw table to make perfect cuts. I was very happy to install the last stone against the ceiling and get back down on the ground. I followed the exact same process around the fireplace, but I needed to do rip cuts on a few rows to make them fit nicely above and below the fireplace. So I had to rip three pieces on the fireplace. The first was the one at the bottom, which was between the floor and the bottom of the fireplace. And then of course, the one at the top for whatever remaining space there was underneath the mantle. But I also had to rip this thin one right here. And that was to get a nice clean line at the top of the fireplace. So you'd never really know it unless I pointed it out, even though it is thinner than the others. It looks great. Now my saw has a maximum cut of 24 inches, so I couldn't rip a full plank, but that didn't bother me. Quick update just to give you where we are. Things are coming together. Look at the stone. I'm done on the chimney all the way up to the ceiling. That wasn't fun being on a ladder 11 feet in the air, but it worked. The last step is working on the ground to put it around the fireplace itself. And you can see my, my laser level right there. Just making sure that they're the same height on both sides. I also used a laser level to figure out how much that second row had to be ripped so that the, uh, the tiles would be perfectly at the top of the fireplace. We absolutely love the character of the lava in this North Stone Plank product, and we're so glad we didn't do a traditional stack stone like everybody else. It's a slightly modern look that combines very well with the traditional mantle and built-ins, giving our room a nice hybrid style I call medicinal. Check the video description to get more information about Norstone Plank or any of their other stone veneers. And please give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment with your thoughts on this project. Fire no! This one goes to the fireplace. There is a shutoff valve there. Hey, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and click that bell icon so you can make sure you'll see every one of the videos in this series as they come out. Thanks for watching.